Hey friends, coming to you here exclusively on Patreon to continue my series uh, that I wanted to do on all the books I have ever published starting at the beginning. So uh, we've gone through Hobson's Choice, Ashes Over the Southwest, the third book was Suffer the Little Voices, and we're now on to book number four, um, Not Exactly Job. And this is a book that came out compliments of Mongrel Empire Press, my friends Janetta Calhoun Mish and, and uh, Kieran Mish. I was grateful to them back at this point, this early point in my career for taking me on on their small press uh, because I was still struggling at that point, trying to figure out how to get things out and didn't have my own press yet and all those kinds of things. So very grateful to Janetta and Kieran for that. But book number four, Not Exactly Job, came about because of my rather tumultuous relationship with the Bible and, and religion over the many years, having grown up as a Baptist preacher's kid. And so <clears throat> Job always seemed to me to be one of the stranger of the many strange books um, in the Old Testament. And one of the reasons is that just nobody wins. Uh, Job is miserable at the end. God's not happy. Nothing really. <laughs> uh, the three friends that come to visit him leave miserable as well. Nobody gets what they want. And it's just, it's a really, it's just a very strange book. So the way I treated this was, as I went chapter by chapter, verse for verse, you know, I didn't write about every single verse, but what I did was is I, I chose, I pulled out certain verses, and I think I treated every chapter. I'm pretty, I, I think I came close, at, I, I know I came very close, if not, uh, to treating every chapter in some way or form. And so I would select a verse, I would pull it totally out of context, <laughs> and then, um, and wrote a poem around the idea of that section or the, that series of verses or those, you know, the individual verses that I pulled out. So the first poem is uh, titled after the title of the book, Not Exactly Job. I'm not that far gone yet, but I think I've heard the Lord say to Satan, have you considered my servant Nathan? He's a general screw up who continues to love me anyway based on chapter one, verse eight. And I've worried for years that my name rhymes with Satan, but they keep telling me it means gift of God. Either way, I'm certain Satan knows exactly what to do to take me down. He'd know exactly when to do it too. And I haven't had the second test of boils and sores yet. And I have no wife to tell me curse God and die. And my three friends, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar, haven't shown up yet, but they've all left their hideouts and are heading this way. And like I said, I'm not exactly Job, but I'm already to chapter three in his book, thinking, may the day of my birth perish, based on chapter three, verse three. Though I'm not really that far gone yet, I don't think. But I know that to talk like this is to set myself up for trouble. That's what happens when you go ahead and throw out what many are thinking, but are afraid to say. And throughout the book, I include some of my black and white photography from a landscape out in north, uh, far western Oklahoma, um, out near Cordell, Oklahoma. And by the way, that's where the cover of the book comes from as well. This is the front and back covers together. And this is an old house. It's no longer there, Highway 153 um, out in Western Oklahoma. And I feature some of the photography of that old house kind of throughout, throughout the book here. Um, so I'm gonna skip on uh, to uh, chapter nine and verse 16. And this is a fun poem. <laughs> I, have, I have to read this one because it's a, it's a poem that has to do with Beth Wood, who is my wonderful uh, singer-songwriter friend out in Sisters, Oregon, who uh, turned me on to Patreon. And so thank you, Beth. I appreciate you for that very much. And the title of this poem is Lyle's Big Hair. 
And the verse that I reference, chapter 9, verse 16, is, even if I summoned him and he responded, I do not believe he would give me a hearing. And that was Job speaking to and about God. Okay? Lyle's big hair. My new friend, Beth Wood, who can sing it like it is, tells me that for really big decisions, Lyle Lovett comes to her in her dreams at night and tells her which way to go by pointing with his big, crazy hair. She says it's working well so far, and I trust people who can play guitar as well as she can. And I know this is not exactly about Joe, but it has a lot to do with direction, and how even when we pray our guts out for guidance, sometimes, no, a lot of times, Lyle, with his big hair in our dreams at night, is just as good as it's going to get, and we know it. So you can see quickly that, you know, this book is not, um, this is not a religious book by any means. <laughs> it's, it's just, you know, it's just a, a walk through my thoughts and feelings um, upon rereading, you know, this strange book. I'm just going to read one more for you. This is way towards the end. Um, and this deals, uh, this deals with chapter 42, verse 6, that says, Therefore, I despise myself. And once again, that's Job speaking. Therefore, I despise myself. And the title of this poem is Ways to Survive. This is somehow, this is something I've never been able to do, Job. No matter how low, how low, no matter how depressed, no matter how down, how dark. I get tired of me now and then. I drive myself crazy sometimes, but I cannot despise myself. It's probably my parents' fault. Or maybe Jesus talked too much about love and hope. Or maybe it's the delusional ego required in poets to survive the short stretch of life they are granted. But you were a poet too, Job. That's why I read your book. So, there it is. Now, unlike the first three books, by the way, um, this one is still available. Um, I have copy, I believe it's still available on Amazon. I'm not sure about that, uh, but I still have copies of this one, and it is still available. Um, and so, um, thank you for this uh, little walk through book four. And I'll be back with a video of my fifth book, book number five, soon. Thank you all for hanging with me in this uh, long season, and I hope you're still listening in, and I hope that you're still reading poetry, because it's a little bit of sanity in a world gone completely mad. Love you guys. I'll be back soon. Hey, friends.